Let's talk about briefly how he introduced the kingdom. Number one, he came to reintroduce the kingdom of God to man on earth. Matthew 4, 17. Very simple. Repent, for the kingdom of God has arrived. He also came to restore the righteousness and holiness of mankind. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. It says, For we have been made righteous, by him, he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I write that word righteousness down, please. Jesus came to make us righteous again. The word righteous doesn't mean to wear a long dress, a long hat, an ugly face, and a white Bible, white shoes, and all them other things. It doesn't mean not to put on lipstick and don't wear no earrings, all that stuff. That's not righteousness. The word righteous is a legal word, not a religious word. And the word righteous means to position oneself. It means right positioning. Jesus came to make us righteous again, which means he came to put us back in the position where we are in right relationship with God again so that we can be qualified to receive the promises of God. This is very important to kingdom thinking. You see, when you live in a kingdom, uh, you're talking about a kingdom, a governing rulership, and you are the domain. So the kingdom of God is God's rulership over your life, which is his domain. And then when you rule the earth, that's the kingdom of heaven, having its impact through your life on the physical planet. Think about this. <laughs> when Adam sinned, the Bible calls him unrighteous. In other words, Adam went out of position with the government, and therefore all the rights that he had as a citizen were canceled. Uh, there may be some of you here who were in prison some time ago, or maybe you have a family member who's in prison, or know somebody who may be imprisoned. Do you notice something? Whenever a government has a citizen that breaks the law and they are incarcerated, what's the first thing they ask for? What do they ask for first? Your passport. Why? Can't travel no more. Now, what is your passport? Your passport is your highest component of citizenship. Without a passport, you are not a citizen anymore. What do you think about this? Now, why does the government grab your passport as soon as you are considered improper in their kingdom? Because they make you an uncitizen. I didn't say non-citizen, because you're still in the country. But you are an uncitizen. Everybody say un. un. Say un is not none. This is very important. You are still a citizen because you're in the country, but now you are under the complete judgment of the government. So the government takes away all of your rights. You become out of position with the government. Now, the government has what? A lot of promises they give to us, don't they? If you are a citizen, you got the right to own property, to buy food, to drive on the streets. You got, you got the right to protect property. You got the right to vote. You got the right to do all these things as a citizen. If you are in prison, you can't vote. Did you know that? If you are in prison, you can't drive where you feel like. You can't eat what you want to. You can't sleep when you want to. You can't go to bed when you want to. When you are in prison, they literally take over your life. You are under the control of what? Judgment. That's what happened to Adam when he disobeyed the government of God. God took back his passport and Adam became a prisoner of darkness. Therefore, he became ruled by a warden called Satan. Get the picture? Heaven took his passport back and the warden Satan took over his life and Adam became what? The Bible says we are slaves to sin, we are imprisoned. What Jesus say in Luke chapter 4? 
Verse 18, he says, I have come to set what? The prisoners free. Why? You are in prison when you're born here in this earth. You are unrighteous. Unrighteous means that you are still God's image, but you have no rights. That's important. Jesus came to restore your positioning so you can claim your citizen promises. Hallelujah. Ah. God set up a, a, a temporary government in the Old Testament. It's called the covenant. The covenant became God's temporary government. God gave that covenant to Abraham. Matter of fact, uh, he established that covenant through Noah first. And you know Noah's great-great-grandson was Abraham. And God said, Abraham, here's how I'm going to rule. I'm going to give you a covenant. If you keep my covenant, then that will make you what? Righteous. What is righteous? Getting back in position with God. That's why it's so important to read the Old Testament. Don't miss tonight. Because you see, Abraham believed God's word and the Bible says that was made unto him righteousness, which means what? It didn't mean Abraham changed his robes and wore turbans and wore a cross around his neck. It meant that Abraham was now back in relationship with the government of God, so now he could claim things that were in the covenant. Praise God. You all must be listening to me. Abraham, therefore, became a qualified citizen again. Paul talks about Abraham a lot. Do you know why? Because after Abraham came who? Moses. And by the time Moses showed up, these people knew nothing about God. They were in Pharaoh's prison for 400 years, which means that they didn't even know God. That's why Moses had to go to them back to Egypt and had to tell them, introduce them to God. The people asked him, who's this God? Not just Pharaoh, the Israelites didn't know God. That's right. So God said, look, I got a big problem. Not only don't they know the covenant of Abraham, but they don't even know the God of the covenant. So he gave Abraham what? A list of laws called what? The Ten Commandments. And God says the first thing to tell them is don't worship no other God. He's trying to change their minds. Change their minds. Now, this is important here. Because you see, Moses ended up with a list of laws. Don't, don't, don't. Abraham had no laws. He just had a promise and he believed it and he became what? Righteous. He became in line with God again. Now God says, for, for me to get them where Abraham was, I got to even get them to believe in me first. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Now what happened was the last government element of God was the Ten Commandments. And so <laughs> when Jesus came, Christ didn't come to really talk about the Ten Commandments. He really came to talk about what Abraham got. Are you with me? So, when Paul writes, Paul says, uh, when God promised Abraham, he was not speaking to Abraham, but he was speaking to his seed, which was Christ. That he would come to make us righteous. Jesus came to line you back up with the government of God so you can claim your rights. In the United States just recently, I'm afraid to talk because this is a big argument right now, but in the United States recently, <laughs> the president, the former president, Bill Clinton, took a presidential prerogative. You all been hearing this on the news a lot, right? His prerogative is that he could pardon a certain amount of people as the president before he leaves office. He decided to pardon some people. Now, pardon is a dangerous thing. Because no matter what you've done, if the king or the ruler pardons you, you pardon now the people who he pardoned, some of them were in jail. Others were fugitives on the run. The reason why there's so much argument about a few of these people is because the crimes that they are guilty of, people are saying, ain't no way we can let them go. But then the law says, constitutionally, if they are pardoned, it's as if they have done nothing. They get their passport back. They can travel where they want to. They can work where they want to. They can do business. They can buy and sell. They have no limitations. Like they never did anything. Do you
you know what Jesus did on the cross for you? Some of your backgrounds are so terrible. If folks find out about you, they won't sit with you no more. But there's a king who sat on a throne one day with blood dripping down his face, and he said, pardon. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I am right with the government again. Full rights. You know, remember the covenant of Abraham, eh? Jesus did not use, oh Lord help me here, the covenant of Moses. Because that was an educational covenant. He used the covenant of what? Abraham. That's the covenant of faith. There was a woman sitting in a building just like this, in a meeting just like this one day. She was sitting in the center somewhere, according to the word of God, and she was humped over. He was teaching, and she was humped over. She couldn't even look up. She was humped over because she had a back problem. Jesus was standing up, speaking, and the Bible says he fastened her eyes on because she couldn't see him. You know, when he talks, he wants to see your face. He's God. So she's humped over, and Jesus looks at this woman. And the Bible says, obviously he stared in such a way that everybody knew he going to do something. It says the Pharisees, the big bishops who sit on the front row, all of them got nervous. And they start sip-sipping. And they said, oh dear, it's a Sabbath day. What's he going to do now? He's going to do something. He, you know, he ain't supposed to work on the Sabbath. The Bible says Jesus heard them. Yes, Don't let God hear you because he'll do exactly the opposite of what you sip-sipping about. It says he heard them, and before he addressed the woman, he took care of a righteousness problem. You missed it. He said, look, I'm not here to talk religion, he says. I am here to talk government, citizenship, legal stuff. Now, let's talk, he says. He says, this woman, first of all, isn't she a daughter of Abraham? Now, ladies and gentlemen, Abraham was alive thousands of years before this event. Come on, somebody. He said, but well, let me tell you something, people. This woman's citizenship is in order. Y'all better sit up straight. There's some stuff you're supposed to get this week, not because you are a Bahamian. Thank you, sister. See? The Bahamian a society may have locked some doors on you. They may decide that certain places you can't go. You can't go up the ladder. You can't go out and start a business. You can't. That, that's all right. That's their kingdom. But you operating under a different government. This woman was under a government of the Pharisees and scribes who said, keep your disease until you die. But here comes the king. Yeah. walking in the service one day and the king said let me tell you something that woman she has a passport and it doesn't say Pharisee <laughs> glory hallelujah he said that woman's passport says kingdom of God Abraham's daughter and then he says if she be a daughter of Abraham which you all agree with then ought not yeah. <laughs> Let me get out of here. I know you got to go home. He said, ought not, tell your neighbor, ought not I be blessed. <laughs> Say, ought not I have be, I be healed right now. Yeah. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Say, ought not, yeah. all my diseases go away. Yeah. Ought not, yeah. every bill is canceled and paid. Yeah. Ought not, yeah. my business prosper. Yeah. Ought not I be promoted from heaven. Yeah. Go ahead and praise the Lord for a second. Clap your hands, glorify God.